Hello there, this little uh, waffle is about choosing the right propeller for your boat. Uh, for maximum power, speed, efficiency and so forth. Um, I've always been complimented on how well my engines sound and how well the boats go through the water and it's because I've matched as best I can the propeller to the various factors that the boat has. And you've only got to do this once, and once you've got it right, that's fine. I'm not talking here about outboard motors. Outboard motors, the manufacturers have already worked out the Optimum uh, propeller. They've worked out the torque, RPM, and manufactured a, a propeller to suit. And it's unlikely you're going to improve on that. But this little waffle is about um, inboard engines, mainly shaft-driven uh, propellers, uh, that the engine may well have been changed at some time and its rev range might be different or the propeller may be changed, someone may have thought they can get it to go faster by putting a bigger propeller on or what have you. Um, so if you're not happy with the performance and you think other people with smaller engines are outpacing you, it's about time you did um, a bit of an investigation. So let's make a bit of a start. Well, first of all, most propellers will have on the boss written their diameter and they'll be written the pitch. But um, we don't always know which is the best pitch and uh, like this one, it's not marked at all. So we can compare it to something compatible, but that's really a bit of a guess. So we really want to know what this pitch is. Well, there's several ways of doing this. We can measure that angle from the horizontal and work in a bit of trigonometry. We can determine how far this propeller will travel through the water in one revolution. But uh, being the village idiot, that's too clever for me. <laughs> I, uh, I went on Wikipedia to see if I could get some uh, little extra info. I've never seen so much maths. It's unbelievable. And, as I said, I'm the village idiot, so I do things a little bit differently. <laughs> um, I have no choice. Um, when it comes to the bore of the propellers, they vary. And this is a part of a, a shaft, um, a boat shaft. Um, this one is metric. It is 10 by 1. That's a metric taper. This one's imperial, smaller size shaft, but of course that's 12 by 1, 1 that way, 12 that way of course. So be sure you get the uh, the correct one. I mean they can be machined out, both the shafts and the propellers, but um, it has to be right. There's no other way of doing it. Okay, so how do I find out what's the correct pitch of an unmarked propeller? Well at this stage I would have loved to have shown you a lovely piece of kit I've made all calibrated, full of dials, singing and dancing but can I find it? Can I? Hell, I've been all morning clearing out one of my sheds I don't remember selling it I don't remember breaking it up for something else perhaps I'm getting senile, I don't know um, so I'm just going to make a quick lash up so that you can see the principle um, as you're not in the business of forever measuring propellers perhaps a lash up will be good enough okay we'll proceed well here's a bit of a lash up I'm sorry about this uh, I've mounted the propeller on a sprigate in a vise and I've mounted a piece of metal with a hole in it on this axle stand and I've got a piece, I've drilled a hole in the top if I put a rod in there so that rests about two thirds of the way from the centre of the prop on the propeller okay now we get a protractor and have I got one? no it's with my blasted machine but we get a protractor and we stick it on the top with some sticky tape blue tack, anything, just temporarily. And a pile of bricks, uh, bricks, books, 
with a pencil uh, pointing to the protractor uh, so we have a reference point and we move the propeller 45 degrees and the shaft drops by a measurement. We measure how much this has dropped or how much that is gained whichever way you like and we multiply that by 8 because there are 8 45 degrees in a complete circle 365 degrees that's the theoretical 360 get it right that's the, the that's the theoretical distance the propeller would have traveled through the water with one revolution it doesn't take in factors like density temperature slip and all the other things involved but it doesn't matter for what we want so that will tell you the pitch of a propeller that's unmarked. That's a starting point. Well here we have a page of Wikipedia. We can approach it scientifically but all this means absolutely nothing to me. The world's full of experts. Quite frankly I wouldn't trust any of them to change a light bulb. But that's another story. Here we have a homemade propeller made by a colleague of mine. Stainless steel, two-bladed propeller on his sailing boat. And the boat's about 22 foot long. And it's powered by a two-cylinder Stuart Turner petrol engine. And it goes very well. Here I'm aboard my Colwick 19 and a half foot sea worker and we're doing a good five or six knots and this is definitely a displacement craft yet the engine is only eight horsepower at 1500 rpm and we're currently doing a thousand rpm so I think this is pretty well matched And here, just a hint of smoke. This sort of cruising speed, we can say fuel efficiency is somewhere in the order of half a pint of diesel per hour. Not bad. I very much covered brought in here eight, nine, ten years ago never seen it move why do people buy them? well I think this sound is a something aligned to a heartbeat I don't suppose many petrol heads would agree with me this heartbeat has got to be better than any outboard motor I know what I'd sooner have. Well, okay then. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem right now is I've lost the file that uh, I've been working on. An animation of um, prop characteristics. Well, I don't know. I think it's gone where my machine has gone. Some parallel universe or something. I don't know. Bloody computers. Sorry folks, I'm not going to do it again, You'll, uh, I'll just waffle on without it. This, this one's not working out too good, is it? Okay, problems with propulsion systems. Well, before trying different propellers, consider other reasons why performance is poor. There could be several reasons. Is the bottom clean? If you're carting half a ton of barnacles and festoons of weeds, it's not going to help. Has a boat been altered in any shape or form? Does the water line on the boat, is that correct? There's many a boot topping that uh, has been painted on a boat that was never intended to be there by the designer. One chap I know had uh, considerable trouble with the uh, performance of his boat. And he spent ages trying to sort out the problems and it transpires that the previous owner had had fitted a modern diesel engine in place of a, a clapped out petrol one. 
but he didn't replace the propeller which had uh, different characteristics of course anyway he fitted the engine rather well actually I've seen the installation and he took a lot of time lining it up when he came to try it out he pushed the lever into a head and the thing went astern to overcome this he changed the cables over so that at least when he pushed it ahead it went ahead the new owner unaware of, of this was scratching his head everything seemed somehow wrong and to his credit he did sort out uh, what had taken place and he also realized that the ratios in the gearbox were different from a head to a stern but of course that that compounded the problem so never underestimate what uh, people might do um, you've really got to be a, a Sherlock Holmes with this one okay a quick summary I, I would I haven't got the file damn it but um, if you suspect that a change of uh, propeller might might be the answer you've got to do some uh, detective work and which way do you go well if it's diesel does the diesel rev freely up to its maximum rpm effortlessly should i say if it does it might mean that the engine is not loaded enough on the other hand does it struggle reluctant to get to its if it does get to its engine speed is there smoke, unburnt fuel, indicating that perhaps the engine is overloaded? The thing is to do tests and to try them. And to uh, try it several times in different directions, so you've got the tide and wind cancelling one another out. Make notes. Um, simple things that are quite obvious perhaps, the number of people on board. All these things contribute to the performance of a boat. I was going to go on at some length but I'm going to draw it at a close here. Um, I'm a bit stumped without my file. As I say I don't know where it's gone. Sorry about that. Uh, you put up with this or switch off. Let's move on. This boat I previously owned before the Colvick Seaworker. It's probably been my favourite. 23 foot West Coast traditional clean cut wooden fishing boat. But uh, she was very old and as I'm getting old I I found I could no longer keep her to the condition that I, I, I desired. And I thought she deserved someone who could do that so reluctantly she was sold. Uh, hence I've now got a fiberglass. Different characteristics, but there we are. Uh, she was a lovely old boat, and as I say, I somewhat regret selling. But I couldn't find the right people to give me a hand. I once put an advert in, in the local fishing tackle shops, in three actually, asking for a day's painting and scraping in return for a a day out on your own fishing all you could eat and drink and uh, never had a reply so uh, she had to go great shame but the point of mentioning this is she had a 15 horsepower blister diesel a water cooled engine into a 2 to 1 gearbox driving a 16 by 14 propeller and this was her optimum, uh, I felt, uh, propeller to have. She would actually go three knots faster with a 16 by 12. But you pay for this speed, and especially seeing she was old, in additional RPM, noise and vibration. So it's all a matter of compromise. And here we have her engine. As I say, a list of two cylinder she was an absolute cracker. They certainly don't make them like this anymore. 